Welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, I'm so happy to be here doing a show on The Infinite Way and Joel Goldsmith's work. Today it's going to be about God formed us for His glory. And I, it has changed my life a bit, so I must tell you that before I start, but I want to thank Tim Riley for directing and doing a beautiful job and putting up with my redheaded nerves, which you will not see on the camera. And I want to thank Virginia Stevenson from mysticsoftheworld.com. She was a teacher student of Joel Goldsmith. She was born where they had plagues, and she almost died with her daughter. And it's so interesting. It's like a tale that parallels Joel, where her husband got her to a Christian science practitioner, and they were both healed. So that shifted Virginia into the Christian science realm. And then one day, the story is so charming, she heard a tape of Joel speaking and burst into tears and wept and just must have known that was who she was and what she knew. So she got to know him. I think he called her a Swami. And she taught with him and worked with him. And she's still teaching in Hawaii. And I just want you to look at mysticsoftheworld.com because it's a beautiful site with all kinds of information on not only the infinite way, but mystics in general. So I thank Virginia for her life work. Now, God formed us for His glory. That title sort of tells us everything we're going to hear today. Yes, we are on assignment. We were created whole and complete and perfect. You've heard me say it so many times. But before I get more to the principles of the infinite way, I want to talk a little bit more about what Jesus Christ went through when He tried to create an invisible world and be heard by the Hebrews. They were looking for a man with a sword. All I can think of is a man on a white horse ready to bring something wonderful. And with a sword, you think of violence. And they were looking for a king. And his message really fell short on what they were looking for because as Jesus said, straight is the way, narrow is the way, and few there be that find it. He was not of this world, nor was his message, and it was an invisible message, and it wasn't a human message. It's like the infinite way of Joel Goldsmith is a movement that has no human message to it. So sometimes it's really hard to understand it because you can't be open to it if you're in this dimension totally and you have not moved into the fourth dimension which is the mystical world, the invisible world, the listening world. And of course, the key is always meditation unfolding you to that listening place in substance. The 91st Psalm says, we must dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So we have, we have Jesus trying very hard to send his message. And one thing I noticed in God formed us for his glory was when the Hebrews did see him return after the crucifixion and they saw him walk the earth, they then became Christians. It took that, but that wasn't many. Not many grabbed that. So my message, first of all, is we must be patient with our own growth because if it's slow, Joel says, it's slow, you progress slowly each day, you must practice meditation and quiet, and you have to work with the principles of the infinite way. And that is, we are one soul, we are all a spiritual universe filled with only divine love, not personal love. Divine love is different where that's easier to love your neighbor because you're not maybe personally involved with them but you know who they are. A, a, a practitioner will tell you they only see the divine in someone. And that is so important for us to understand. So we've got the Hebrews giving Jesus a hard time. And then we have Jesus walking this earth, preaching and teaching and hoping to get his message through to those. And he did, he did. You know, they say there can't be a resurrection without a crucifixion. And that really means we must die to our beliefs here. Now, friends, we've really got to be sensitive to what we've been inundated with here. It's no mystery that we've been hypnotized, mesmerized by all of this fear. It's a plane of fear absolutely loaded with disease and death and just you name it, the worst things that can happen to you, we all have been taught. This is, this is life. Now that's a lot to cut through to find spiritualism, to find uh, your peace, to find the substance of your soul. Now, 
Joel will say, listen to the soul. The soul is what speaks to you. Now, think about that. Think about your intuition. You can go into a room and all of a sudden your soul just knows something. Your mind is a different story. Now, Joel in this book is trying to help us with the difference between a physical existence, a mental existence, metaphysical, and spiritual. Now, in the material plane, we perceive with our heads. We make up stuff. We have information in there, and we throw it out, and we use it, and we follow it, and we believe it. Now, here's where metaphysics has changed. Joel will say we were absolutely held back 75 years because we worked with the mind, thinking that the mind was God, and that the problems we projected came from God, our mind. And that apparently is certainly not the truth with being mystically oriented while, well, your mind is only an avenue of awareness. That's it. It doesn't do anything else but sink into the substance of the soul and listen and contemplate. So let's talk about contemplating. Find something spiritual to think about. Sometimes it can be hard on a day when Joel is suggesting at least five times a day, you take five minutes. Think of something beautiful and spiritual, but don't just let it go. Wait till it takes you to a place of quiet. There's a substance there that you can relish and dwell in that is the real you. You are invisible. You're not a man, you're not a woman, you're not a human. You are an invisible being with all of the Christhood within you. Every scrid, every piece, every wholeness of the Christ is within you. And Jesus said, you have everything that I have. And that's a pretty tough message for anyone to get. So again, if it's any comfort on your progressing slowly or forgetting to meditate, it was hard for Jesus to teach that and frankly get anywhere around that. But he did. He did. And now we have the mystics of the world and, and Joel, I must honor Joel Goldsmith. He, he hasn't been with us, I think, since 1964. He's written 40 books, many tapes. He is just, what a gift, what a gift to, to humanity. And his movement, which is unorganized, and you know, you can't be a practitioner of the, of the infinite way. You can't just say, I, this is what I do. Nobody's ordained to do that because it's so unorganized and it's so invisible that if you've got a message to say, you'll prosper. But you don't say, hey, you hang your shingle. It's just not what it's like, which is nice because we can all walk the earth plane privately. We don't have to tell our families. Nobody needs to confront you about what you think because chances are good they might confront you. So it's such a private wonderful world, and it is being lived by many. Now, I want to talk to you about 10 righteous men can save a village or save a city. Now, do you know what that really means? It's the difference that you make contributing to the spiritual universe, which is all that there is, is much bigger than you think. Now, think about the world we live in today, which is really brutal. There's just so much negativity, so much political stuff. And, you know, I walked with somebody yesterday who is doing volunteer work in New Hampshire, and she's doing this, not knocking on doors, being very gentle, trying to answer questions. And I assured her that that contribution is so much bigger than she thinks. Because people are confused. People are brainwashed. People who have egos who think, ah, money, driving the best car, getting the best job is the way we live here. And that is pretty, uh, it's, it's dark. And that falls away from folks. That's not really living. Really living is living with the joy. I mean, here I'm older and I can be joyful. Old people can be joyful. We can all be joyful. It never ends and it gets better because our practices are what give us the Christ mind. The Christ mind is the soul that you listen to, that you rejoice with, and you wake up each morning going right there saying, I am going to remember. In this book, Joel said something very interesting that I thought very helpful. Well, if a phone rings, you pick it up and you say, hey, God, here we go. There are three of you on the phone. It's like checking in that you've got the soul company, that you've got the words, you've got the right attitude. It's like a child being walked across the street by their parents, feeling so loved. It's, you are. Uh, and then another wonderful thing he said, which I think about when I'm running, is God is on your shoulder, so smile. 
even on that mile where you feel like, is it going to be over yet? And that's comforting to know that you've got company 24-7. Guidance is always with you. Yeah, it's never lost. It's right there, and it never lets you down. So again, we must think about meditation and quiet and the presence being totally with you. So as we remind ourselves, now, I wasn't thinking about the presence a few weeks ago, and I had a little accident, and I tried to figure out what I had done wrong. I wasn't actually going to mention it, but I realized that I was not in the substance. Now, the substance is the activity of the Christ, which is this incredible energy that wants to share with you. He's waiting for you. Someone said there's a second coming. Well, how can there be a second coming when there were never a first coming? I like that. It means there always was the Christ. There always was this perfect universe. We've always been a part of it all. So there's nothing to wait for because he's always ahead of us. He's always waiting for us to check in. So there's where our human teaching has never asked us to be patient. It doesn't ask us to have slow, a slow, accept a slow progression. But that, in fact, is what really, if we're honest with ourselves, and I have to be with mine because I have no patience, is that if I progress slowly, that's got to be good enough. And I will tell you, friends, it makes things better. And by that, I am finding, as I do my book reports, and uh, this is the way I guess I'm supposed to be doing this because I got myself into it. Uh, a book fell on my head, and it was parentheses and eternity, and then like Virginia, I didn't weep, but I could not put that book down. I wanted everybody to have it. And again, I've had to learn, don't bring up some of this mystery of your beliefs because a lot of people who are in the human world especially are not going to want to hear it. So don't confront anybody. Even if you have to leave your family, that can be a high form of love. And by that, I don't mean you walk out, but you can leave them on an emotional level, on a soul level. You don't lose who you are. You can be in their lives, but on a very different plane, on a divine plane. You can love them and accept them, but you learn to be private. And that's terribly important. So God made man for his glory. So here's the point about the book. We all have something to do. We were made to lift consciousness. Every one of us was made to lift consciousness. We have an assignment. We came here. We, we wandered away. Okay, so we, we bought into this human stuff. We wandered away and then we get a book. And then all of a sudden we start questioning something inside us, which is the truth, starts to gel and we start to search. Now, my friends, the best help you get is your problems. The worse that they are, the more trauma you have, the more separation, anxiety, PTSD, that opens the door to the spiritual realm. I hate to even bring that up, but that's opened me up from loss. It's just had me searching. And when you have demonstrations that make your life look better, don't think you're there yet. Joel says, don't accept that. Don't say, ah, I've, I've reached this plateau, I've got nothing more to do. That is not the truth. You keep searching because there's always more. God wants to bring us all home where we started. Now, we were formed before the womb. Just try to remember that. We've been formed forever. There's no, I mean, there's no, been, never been a death on the earth plane, ever, ever. God did not create that. He didn't create disease. So I know even disease can wake us up, and that is a good thing. And he doesn't say, you know, don't go to a doctor if it saves your life. I mean, we all have to get guidance, and God might send you to something that will save you. But it's all about living in substance. It's all about knowing you were formed for his glory right down the road. And if you reincarnate, guess where you're going to reincarnate? Right here. Because I have reincarnated at least 20 times. I have been a different Penelope so many times. I, I, I look back and I can't even remember. I was that girl who either ran a marathon or was studying ballet in New York or, or teaching special needs, whatever it was. I mean, those are wonderful chapters. And each one takes you to the next one. Okay, let's talk about reincarnation again. I just mentioned I'd have 20 lifetimes in this one, and each one was important for the next one. And that's all good, because you see how creative we are, friends. 
you outgrow certain things. Your ego may say, I got to climb this ladder because boy, that's what life's about. I am going to take my ego and people are going to see me and say, is that a great person? Whereas the great person is the peaceful, loving person that lives privately and quietly. And that is the person that moves the mountains around you. Believe me, I've got to say this. People don't vote because they don't think they make a difference. I cannot tell you how many people hide under a bush because they think, ah, why bother? You know, why should I bother because things are so bad? But that is exactly the attitude we have to change because even Joel, no matter where he was, believed in patriotism, he was in the army, he served. We all have to take care of our country. We have to take care of the world by doing that because we're all connected. So just know, like my friend who goes up to New Hampshire and, not, and doesn't knock on doors but finds a way to communicate, that can change lives and it can educate people to the truth about who we are as a country, as a, who we are as a world, because we are loving people. Every one of us has that core of the Christ. We were born with it. We came before the womb into it. So please, don't cop out because you really don't know better. Try to educate yourself to hearing that what little step you make is bigger than you'll ever know because we are one soul and consciousness can be raised by the love you pour into the whole of the world. So don't think for one minute it's not felt and seen and it doesn't change things because negativity, like Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree. He saw illusions through meditation. He saw the negative. He, f he realized it wasn't real. It wasn't the power that God is the only power that there is. That's all there is. And Jesus taught nothingness, which is such a strange word, but he realized as he worked his way through his mission that he had to negate, he had to nullify negativity. He, had, he healed people by not seeing what wasn't real. He preached, God is the only power. That's, there's, there's no God that punishes. There's no God that rewards. How do you like that? Aha. Uh -huh. There's only a God that's in the presence waiting for you to listen. And by that, I mean you have a pal. It doesn't have to be a husband, a wife, a, a job. It, it, it doesn't have to be any of those things because even though you're in a, maybe a big family, you're still alone. That's where you need that companionship. You need the meditation practice. You start your day with it. You check in. Think of God smiling uh, as he's on your shoulder. Try and think of picking up the phone and saying, there are three of us here. If you can find little ways to remind yourself of who you are and the company that you have got, Jesus totally depended on the Christ. He depended for every move. He'd go into the wilderness 40 days. Whatever he did, he was listening and he quieted himself down because his assignment was overwhelming. I mean, he studied with the Essenes. It's an order of very high priests. I think we've got to understand that it's like Isaiah, hundreds of years before Jesus came to this plane, knew of oneness. The Essenes knew of oneness. And Jesus studied with them and became a rabbi. So he did his homework for his 33 years. He just wasn't born. I mean, yes, we say the virgin birth, but the virgin birth is simply that Jesus was invisible. We can't have preconceived ideas of who God is, who, what anything is here. We've got to just get rid of all of that. We have to be humble and innocent and a vacuum. So yes, we're a vacuum. We listen. We know nothing. We don't know what our future brings. We don't want to start planning for next year. We've got to stop that. We've got to stop worrying about things. I mean, there's no, there's no point in that. Don't outline your life. Your life is living in a moment where it's given to you. Now, you know, that's huge. That's not a human message. That's a huge transformational way for you to get centered and really find out where you're going and get your assignment because the activity of the Christ has that assignment waiting for you. Ask for it. You know what you like to do. You know what your soul vibrates to. And there's a message for every one of us. We're in this together. And I have such high hopes for this planet, for this world, for this universe. I have such high hopes. Sometimes I, I carry on about that and people will look at me like, oh, 
But it's true. Every little thing that we do makes a huge difference if it comes from the divine source. Remember, friends, you have only one source. It's divine, it's whole, it's complete, it doesn't have disease, it doesn't die. And that's a leap. I know it's a leap. But make the leap and, and chip away at the leap. Even if some days you say, well, I do need to do this and I do need maybe to do what I can't totally let go of the material plane yet, but I would like to. So it's your intention that counts. Show up. And as Joel says over and over, practice, practice, practice. And, and he does say, and I haven't, it does happen once in a while to me. It's not on automatic yet with me, but that's why I do this because I want to be on automatic. I want to be constantly in the presence. I want to hear the invisible world. I want to hear it speak to me and talk to me. I've had mystical experiences where, yes, uh, invisible sights have hit me. Like I had a picture fall the other day when I was missing my dad and it was a thing about his death. And I just, sometimes those wonderful invisible messages come to say, I have remembered you. Here's another almost funny one. I'm in an ambulance and my dad was a um, allied van. Um, he, he ran a company in Fairfield County. And as I'm going down the route, route 6A, feeling terribly embarrassed, I look out the back window and there's this big orange allied van. <laughs> well, it, did, it made the trip down doable because I knew what it was. And I talked to my dad and I talked to my grandparents who were practitioners in the 1800s and my dad was a Christian scientist and I've learned a lot from him. And I'll tell you, when we were raised as kids, we kind of thought he was a whack job because a lot of this invisible thinking and this denial of what's really happening can scare people and you could be called a kook. But what I did learn because I had so much trauma after I lost my dad, that what he was saying was really the truth. Whether he could live up to it or whether I can, it is the truth. And he lived it and he passed the baton. I'm one of four girls and I took it. And I have felt so blessed and so connected to this line in my family of Chattertons that love spiritual healing. They love the illumined world. And so I give thanks that somehow parentheses of eternity fell on my head years ago. I don't know how many years it's been now, five or seven that I've been preaching this. For 25 years, I did Awaken the Dream, going through every spiritual practice possible. Uh, and I learned, uh, because I, I, I learned a lot from each one that it wasn't me. However, being a gracious hostess, I sat there, I listened to songs, I heard the most incredibly inventive, creative ways people find life, and they were all perfect for them. But I found out after 25 years, it wasn't my path. So I give thanks for my dad, grandparents, and for Joel, and my friend, um, uh, Diane Doheny in New Hampshire, who's always my pal if I need to cry on someone's shoulder or she needs me. We, we love the infinite way. It is infinite. It's precious. But my friends, again, please do something. Share your divine love for happiness for you. Because as you pour out your splendor, and you have splendor to pour out, then you have eternity. But you have to pour it out to have it. Okay, you follow me? Pour your splendor out however you want to do it because then it's all yours. Keep it private. You don't have to talk about it. You don't have to tell everybody how great you are. But the beauty of that is that gift is within every one of you. And if you see detours and you take them, not to worry. And if you see people who are dark and dense, don't worry either. This is not the end of their life. They have the divine spark as well. So forgive your enemies, forgive those who don't know any better, who are ignorant, who we have to, because think of how ignorant we've been. Think of what we have fallen for. See the divine in everyone, no matter how hard it is. Doesn't mean you may have to vote for them, but it means you can step up and do something to express the splendor that you can express with your talents. Now, the cosmic mind can have great inventors and, and literary people and people who are very, have lots of human wisdom. We go from the material to the cosmic where we have genius in the human plane of wonderful gifts. Then we move to the fourth dimension and we have the Buddha mind, the light mind. We have the invisible plane and that's the leap from the material totally to living invisibly. Yes, Jesus came not of this world. 
and I can understand why he had a hard time. But my friends, I'm winding down now, and I just want to thank everyone for joining me. And please find your glory and share it because you are formed to do something. I'll talk to you again next week. Thank you.